is it too far gone and we just need to let the whole thing collapse? Look, I've studied revolutionary politics from a theoretical perspective. There used to be a theory in the 1900s which said, let things collapse. And then when things get really bad, people rise up. This theory is absolutely nonsense. It never has gone anywhere. In fact, oppression oppresses. You have to take an engineering approach, guys. You got to take a carpenter's approach or a plumber's approach or small business person's approach. If I walked out of my business here, everything's going to fall apart. There's something called entropy. If I wanted to make the iPhone, the iPhone didn't just is created. Steve Jobs had to create it. He had to bring in the best engineer scientists. You know what I'm saying? A revolution, a, a movement doesn't just happen because they fuck us over so much. In fact, they'll drive us back into the woods where we'll be shitting everywhere like it's happening in San Francisco. They want Hunger Games type society, yeah. Yeah, but that's why they want to train people to think, oh, this is just all like something just happens. No, there is a way out of this. There's a way to build a bridge. You have to go and study force equals mass times acceleration. Then you have to study finite elements. You have to go through the discipline. You're creating a whole group of 20 year olds who fucking think their opinions matter. They don't even know how to solve a problem. They can't even lay out a simple equation. So that's the society we're creating where things just happen. No, we create things. I had to write the code to create email. I had to create a company. I had to bring people together. I had to learn how to hire and fire. It's hard fucking work. And people who know this are working people. A surgeon knows this. A doctor does and surgeons have to make decisions. A plumber knows this. An engineer knows this. That so you have to make things. In order to make something, you need to understand the physical laws. So how do you make a revolution? I've discovered those laws. And that is why I keep hammering away to people. You know, when I wrote System and Revolution, it took me 50 years to write that. What are those systems principles? What are those mechanics? And you know what? If you want to really change the world, you have to sit your fucking ass down and you have to study and learn. And parents don't force their kids to do that anymore. So you have a bunch of dilettantes running around there. If we're going to win, and the good news is working people, there's enough of us. There's enough good plumbers. There's enough good electricians. There's enough people who engineer stuff that know it takes effort to build stuff the wrong model to say, well, things just get worse. No, go look at countries like Jamaica and Haiti. Things keep getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And they'll keep getting worse. When I was in Africa, I love animals and so on. You're sitting there and you're watching these primates and you say, shit, we were out there at one time. And that wasn't that long ago. So we went from that to a room with electricity and all. So the establishment says, you know what? You don't get any more housing. Now you're living on the street. Okay. We're not even gonna let you live on the street. You could end up back with a bunch of apes. They don't care. When the establishment knows you're getting onto them, they're going to create the not so obvious establishment. And I'm telling you, the real enemy here is fucking booby fucking Kennedy. He endorsed Hillary Clinton three times. She supported rabid pro-vaccine mandates. She supported pro-mask mandates. She's pro-Monsanto. She had one of the chiefs of Monsanto run her campaign. How are all of these dumbass fucking conservatives putting Kennedy on any of these shows? And why is not one of them asking him the question, why did you endorse Hillary Clinton? Can you answer that question? Why isn't Sean Hannity putting me on? Because they're teeing it up to promote the not so obvious, because right when people get close, they create the not so obvious establishment. So why is Joe Rogan not asking him, why did you endorse Hillary Clinton three times? Do you know why? Because they're all part of the cabal. We have a neo-media cabal right now that in involves Fucker Carlson, Russell Brand, involves Joe Rogan, involves all these people around them. If you see anyone promoting Kennedy and they get views, like I see this guy, Chief Nerd. It's all this cabal, including cat shit. He's part of the cabal. Think of this. Think of this. They need Kennedy to be the anti-vax guy and Trump the pro-vax guy. That's why Trump will never uh, change his position on the vaccine. Not he's only that, it. think about the bigger issue here. Kennedy's actually a big pharma guy. Kennedy's big pharma. He said he's pro-vax, yeah. Not only that, he's big pharma. Look at the entire Kennedy's. They bootleg drugs and they promoted drugs. Bootleg liquor, yeah. Well, John F. Kennedy was on all sorts of drugs. He had venereal disease. He should never have been allowed into the Navy. He was disqualified. His father got him in. He was taking drugs all day, pharmaceutical drugs. Kennedy's the one who passed the 1962 Vaccination Act. Then the second brother is the one who saved big pharma companies. He's the one who was on the Senate side sponsor of the National Vaccine Injury Program, which gave indemnity to all the big pharma guys. Ted Kennedy. Ted Kennedy right here murdered a woman. Yeah. Okay. The Kennedys have been all big pharma. And so the first Kennedy, JFK, he's the one who created all the bureaucracy within the government, the corrupt bureaucracy for vaccines. Look, as president, I will eliminate the 1962 Vaccination Act. It should go away. There's no right government has to be in your bodies at all. But Booby doesn't want to address that because he wants to keep his Kennedy bullshit going. And then Ted fucking Kennedy, who was a drug addict himself, what does he do? He saves the big pharma companies by passing the National Vaccine Injury Program, which they had Reagan sign. And that created more government bureaucracy, created the vaccine courts. So if you got injured, you can no longer sue big pharma. Thank you to the Kennedys again. And then booby fucking Kennedy 
speaks with 15 different tongues. Oh, I'm against vaccines. Then I'm pro-vax. I'm totally pro-vax. You know, I've never been anti-vax. I vaccinated all my kids, gave them 69 vaccines. And then I'm going to create a whole new way of creating safe vaccines. So he's going to take all these corrupt institutions as two uncles built, and then he's going to somehow make them create safe vaccines. I mean, the ludicrous of this bullshit is to yeah, save uh, big pharma. Now, it's it's to deceive so many people. Well, here's the thing. The motherfucker is taking TRT, legal steroids, which is really anabolic steroids. By the end of 2029, in six years, the anabolic steroid industry is going to grow to be a quarter of a trillion dollar industry, big pharma. And an anabolic steroid has about 10,000 to 100,000 times more more chance of creating blood clots than the mRNA, both create blood clots. The mRNA vax has a certain adverse effect. That's going to become around $120 billion industry. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so they get, I they get and I think, I think all these guys should disclose what drugs they're on. Kennedy should disclose. Perfect. It should all be drug tested. What, what drugs are you on, Dr. Shiva? I don't take drugs. And I bet you I could do more push-ups and more sit-ups than Kennedy and Trump. And I would really like to challenge. They want to do Zuck versus Musk. I'll take Kennedy, Trump, and Musk on in one of those cage fights.